Hey what's going on guys, in this video we are going to see how to find out unknown currents using mesh analysis by inspection method. Now in order to do that we have to follow all these four steps. The first step is assign mesh currents. So we are going to put the mesh currents in each loop. Let's say this one I1 and let's call this one I2 and let's call this one I3, right? And the next step is find the resistant matrix elements. So first thing is we have to look at the RII. So RII basically R11 and if you put R11 you have to find all the resistance in first loop and add them together. And in the first mesh we have 4 ohm and 6 I mean 2 ohm, 4 ohm and 2 ohm. So we are going to just add both of them. 4 plus 2 that's going to be equal to 6 and R22 now we have to look at the resistance in the second loop second mesh right that's 2 ohm and 8 ohm so this is going to be 2 plus 8 and that's going to be equal to 10 and R33 again we have we have to look at the third mesh and add the add all the resistances 4 ohm 6 ohm 8 ohm so this is going to be 4 plus 6 plus 8 and that's going to be equal to 18. Now we have all the all these values. After that, what you have to do is we have to actually it's 18. So this is 18. The next step is R A J. So we have to look at the resistance that's shared by this uh, each what I mean each currents. So first one we have I1 and I2. We have this resistance is shared. So we can say R12 and R21 is equal to this 2 ohm. And in this case, what we have to do is we have to put a negative sign in front of this one, right? So we whatever the shared resistance, we put negative sign. That's the only difference. And then we have to look this one. And if you look at I1 and I3, they are this 4 ohm is shared, right? So we can put R1. 3 and R31 is equal to 4 and also we have to put a negative sign and if you look at 2 and 3 there's 8 ohm is shared by both so this is going to be R23 and equal to R32 is equal to 8 and we have to put a minus sign so that's going to be minus 8 now all we have to do is put them in matrix form so matrix form is basically this is in first row first column and this is in second row second column and this is in third row third column so this is going to be a diagonal right and uh, this shared L I mean shared resistance is going to be this location like first row second column right here and second row first column right here and this is first row third column that is right here and third row first column that is right here and the third one is second row third column that is right here and then third row this should be second column so this is going to be right here and this is how we arrange matrix after we arrange this one everything else is easy now what we have to do is i1 i2 i3 and then we have to look at the voltage sources and see which way it's going through if it's going from negative to positive it's going to be a voltage rise and if it goes from plus to minus it's going to be a voltage drop so we have to put a negative so the first one we have voltage rise is going from this i1 is going from negative to positive so this is going to be a voltage rise so we put plus 16 and i2 is going from plus to minus so this is going to be a voltage drop so this is going to be minus 40 and i3 we don't have anything so this is going to be just zero and that's it after this what you have to do is we have to do Kramer's rules in order to find i1 i2 i3 to use Kramer's rules what we do is we find the determinant of the original matrix that's going to be this r minus 2 minus 4 minus 2 10 minus 8 and minus 4 minus 8 18 then to find i1 you have to swap this one with the first column 
and find the determinant. Then if you swap with the first column, that's going to be 16 minus 4 is 0. And other two will remain the same. That's going to be minus 2, 10, minus 8, minus 4, minus 8, 18. And you have to find the determinant. And for the second one, again, same thing. You have to swap this one with the second column and find the determinant. So 6 minus, others remain the same. 6 minus 2 minus 4, second column will become like this. 16 minus 40, 0. And the third column remains the same. Minus 4 minus 8, 18. And you have, to, you have to do for the I3, same thing. 3, you have to swap with the third column. After you find the determinant, you have to use this equation. Kramer's rule is whatever the swap determinant that is for the first one it's one over the original determinant for the second current mesh current we put second equation that is this one divided by D and for I3 same thing third equation divided by D and if you calculate this value this is gonna give you the mesh currents and that's how we do this kind of problems I hope you guys find this video helpful See you next time.